Hi, in this video, I'll continue talking about logarithms, show their properties, and apply those properties to solve more equations. If you find this video helpful, please press subscribe below to subscribe for more contents. Let's review. This is a summary of my previous video on logarithms. Press pause if necessary. Let's start with the fundamental definition or idea that log is the opposite of exponential. The technical term for opposite is inverse. That means logarithm and exponential cancel each other. A to the power and log base A cancel. You should always keep this in mind. It's not the most commonly used property in an algebra class, but the more advanced you go, the more this becomes relevant. I'll just do one quick example here and then we'll move on. If I have the number two, for example, I can always write it as 10 to the power log base 10, which I don't write the subscript of, of two, because the 10 to the power and the log base 10 cancel. And I can get fancier, two to the power x is 10 log two, the whole thing to the power x. And if you remember the rules of exponential, that means these two powers get multiplied. Two to the x is the same as 10 to the x log two. Like I said, it doesn't come up very often in an algebra class, but in a more advanced class, it will. Still staying with the basic definition of log, a to the power b equals c means exactly the same thing as log base a of c equals b. b is the exponent, and b is also the logarithm. Therefore, it means this. It means a logarithm behaves like the exponent. It behaves like a B up here in the power. And that will be where we got all our properties of logarithm from. The properties of a logarithm come from the properties of the exponent in a power. So let's review the rules of exponents in a power. These are the rules of exponent. a to the x times a to the y is equal to a to the x plus y. So instead of having to multiply two powers, we just add the exponents. Next rule, a to the x over a to the y. We're dividing two powers, and instead of having to do any division, we just subtract the exponents. And finally, a to the x raised to the power y, and instead of having to raise the power to another power, all we do is to multiply the exponent by the new number y. All of these expressions of the form a to the b equals c a logarithm would behave like a b, right? Because b is equal to log base a of c. What does that mean? That means logarithms behave like these, where every calculation is one step simpler. Instead of having to multiply here, all we need to do is add. Instead of having to divide here, all we need to do is subtract. Instead of having to raise to a power here, all we need to do is multiply. So let's write down that rule. The exponent is one level simpler. Instead of multiplying, we add. This next rule is instead of dividing, subtract. 
And the third rule is instead of raising to power, multiply. And since the exponent is the same as the logarithm, that means logarithm is also one level simpler. Instead of multiplying inside a log, we add the logarithms instead. Instead of dividing inside the log, we subtract the logarithm instead. And instead of raising to the power inside the log, we multiply by that number instead. You've seen this before. I called it the exponent property of logarithm. And one more point to make, if you have a to the x plus a to the y, there's no simplification because there's no such level that is simpler than addition. Addition is the simplest already. So here there's no change. Scrolling over to the logarithm side, that means when there is an addition inside a logarithm, there's no way to go one level simpler than addition, also no change. Instead of multiplying inside, add the logs. Instead of dividing inside, subtract the logs. Instead of raising power inside, multiply the log by the new power. You may find this chart helpful. Adding or subtracting are the simplest operations and they're kind of equally simple. Subtracting is just adding a negative. One level more complicated, if you add multiple things, that's a multiplication. If you subtract multiple things, that's a division. As in, if you have 100 candies and you give 20 candies to each of your five friends, that's subtracting 20, subtracting 20, subtracting 20 five times, and that's equivalent to dividing your candy among your five friends. When you subtract several times, that's a division. And when you multiply several times, that's when you raise to a power. And so a power going one level simpler is to multiply. A multiply going one level simpler is to add, a division going one level simpler is to subtract. And an addition going one level lower, there's no such thing. So that's another way of remembering this, that the calculation on the inside becomes one level simpler on the outside. And there's no such thing as being simpler than addition and subtraction. So when you have addition and subtraction inside of a logarithm, there's no simplification, you're done. Let's now do an example where I expand this single logarithm into many logarithms. To do this, I work with it like PEMDAS, order of operation going from the outside in. The big operation on the outside is the division line where I have the numerator and the denominator separately. The first thing I'll do is I will apply the division rule. This becomes log. And by the way, you notice that there's no subscript and that means base 10. Now I continue with my PEMDAS order of operation 
The next big operation right here is a multiplication. So I will use the multiplication rule to break it up and a multiplication on the inside becomes an addition on the outside. One level simpler. And there's the same thing in the second logarithm. There's a big multiplication right here. So I will break it up that way. But now I have to remember there's a big subtraction on the outside. So I have to remember that I'm subtracting all of this and it's log of z cubed plus log of square root of y on the inside like that. And that whole thing is being subtracted. All right, now what do I have? I have a raised to power here which means I can use the exponent rule, or I can think of it as being one level simpler. One level simpler than an exponent is a multiplication. X goes in front, log of two, plus two times log of X minus, and the same thing here, the cube power goes to the front as a three times log of Z, and the last logarithm is a square root. Hmm. I don't have a rule for square root. What do I do? Uh, then, like most things in math, if you don't have a rule for something, you see if you can change your problem so that one of the existing rules apply. Can square root of y fit into one of these? Yes, it can because square root of y is the same as y to the power one half. So instead of writing this as square root of y, I'm gonna write as y to the power one half, and then I can use the exponent rule. And the one half goes in front, log of y. And I box it up, that's my final answer. Next example, I'm asked to combine all of these logarithms into a single logarithm. Then I do everything like I did before, just in the opposite direction. Two log x, that looks like one of these, so the y can just go back inside. Instead of taking the y from the inside out, they just put it back in. A word about a logarithm in the scheme of order of operation. A logarithm is considered its own grouping symbol. So it does not reach across a plus or minus sign. So log of x stops here. It does not reach the three log y. And the same thing here, this logarithm stops here. And that's why a lot of times you see that people don't put in a lot of parentheses. For yourself, just to be sure, put in parentheses. All right, back to our example, plus. You put the three back inside here, then you get log of y cubed minus log of z to the one fifth. And z to the one fifth is the fifth root of z. I can combine more. This is the sum of two logs. So it's a multiplication on the inside using this rule. and then followed by a subtraction, which is a division on the inside. So now I divide on the inside. The long expression with multiple logs is now combined into a single log. So I'm done, I box this up. Third example, expand logarithm of x squared minus x minus six. At first glance, this cannot be done. 
because on the inside, you have a series of subtractions, which is like adding negative X and plus negative six. And addition and a subtraction, no change. Because there's nothing simpler than addition and subtraction. So there's got to be a trick to this. The trick is this, we have these three rules. So is there a way that you can change x squared minus x minus six into one of these? The answer, yes. You can change x squared minus x minus six into two things multiplied together. That's called factoring. So x squared minus x minus six can be factored. some sort of three and two. And it looks like a minus is on three and a plus is on two. And therefore log of x squared minus x minus six is the same as log of this multiplication. And because of this multiplication right in the middle, I can break the logarithm into a sum of two logs. Can I break up some more? No, no more. This is a subtraction. This is an addition, no more changes. And since we're down to just a linear expression in X, there's no more factoring either. So I'm completely done. I'll box this up. Now introducing natural logs. There's this particular number in mathematics called E, and it's approximately equal to 2.718, et cetera. And there are a lot of good videos online explaining where the letter E comes from. One way you could think about it is that if you have a dollar in the bank and you have 100% interest rate, if you compound it as much as possible, if you compound it only once a year, then the next year you get $2. If you compound it twice a year, then the next year you get something like 225. If you compound it as many times as possible, you don't get infinite number of dollars, you get this many dollars. So that's one way of thinking about it. But that's not something I want to get into in this video. It just happens that log base E behaves very nicely in calculus. And therefore all the people in STEM, all the scientists, the engineers, the mathematicians use log base E. We have a special name for it. Log base E is called the natural log and it's written LN. And on a calculator, it's the LN key. Now we have two logarithms that exist on a typical calculator, log base 10 and log base E. What about all the other bases? How do we get base two, three, 11, et cetera, from a typical calculator? Well, some calculators have arbitrary bases, but what about those that don't? We're gonna need a change of base formula. You have seen the change of base formula before if you've seen my previous video. I just didn't say it out loud but it comes from the fact that the single exponential equation can be solved two different ways. Suppose I'm given this equation, solve seven to the X equals 25. One way I can solve it is to use the definition of logarithm and convert this exponential into logarithm. The base remains seven. So I have log of seven and then the X used to be attached to the base seven. Now it's no longer attached. It becomes a result. 
whereas the 25 used to be the result, now it becomes attached to base seven in logarithm. That's one way of solving it. Another way of solving it is to take log both sides. And let's say I'm gonna take log base 10. I have log using the exponent property. I bring the X to the front and I divide both sides by log seven. On the left, the log seven cancel and I have X equals X equals log 25 over log seven. Oh, look, it's the same X, but in one version, it's expressed as a logarithm of base seven. And in another version, it's expressed as logarithms of base 10, meaning the log base seven and log base 10 are the same. There's a invisible 10 here. And I can imagine that this can be done with a lot of different numbers, not just seven, 25 and 10, but it could be with any number A, B and C. So I've replaced the seven with an A, the 25 with a B and the 10 with a C. Then I have log base A of B is equal to log base C of B divide by log base C of A. This is called a change of base formula because on the left, I have a logarithm of some base A and on the right, I have a couple of logarithms of a new base C. So here's a change of base formula on the new page. And if I want to use log base 10, then it's log B over log A. If I want to use log base E, then it's natural log. And the way to remember this is to think visually. In the original, the number B looks higher than the number A. Then after changing base, the number B is still higher than the number A. Now let's apply everything we've learned to solve some equations. Take this one, solve log base two of x plus two plus log base two of x equals three. This is an equation with a bunch of logarithms in it and the x is inside the logarithm. I need to free the x from inside the logarithm. Then I need to undo the logarithm. What thing will undo a logarithm? Exponential. Because remember, logarithm and exponential are opposite. So they will cancel each other. So it seems like I should raise two to the power of both sides. On the right, I have two to the third, which is just eight, no problem. But on the left, I have a problem. I have two to the something plus something. So I could use this two to the something plus something is the same as two to the X times two to the Y. So I could do that. Or I could use properties of log first, and then I end up with the same result. These two will combine into log base two of X plus two times X. And now I raise two to the power of both sides. On the right, it's just eight. Two to a third is just equal to eight. On the left, I have two to a logarithm power and two to a logarithm power base two cancel. Two to the power and log base two cancel because they're opposite of each other. Then I have just X plus two times X left. Well, now it's just a quadratic equation. Let's distribute 
And for quadratic equation, I want zero on one side. So I want to subtract eight. X squared plus two X minus eight equals zero. And this equation is factorable. It factors into X, a four and a two. And it looks like it's a plus four minus two. And therefore, is x equals negative four or x equals two. And I'm going to box this up, which is wrong. Don't do that. Don't box it up. Box this up instead. A log equation may have extraneous solutions. You must always check. Let's write the equation down here. Now let's check the two solutions. Log base two of negative four plus two. Is it equals to three? No, this is undefined. A logarithm has domain that's positive only. There's no such thing as logarithm of a negative number. This is undefined. And for that matter, negative four plus two equals negative two. So that's also undefined. So no, X equals negative four is not an answer. The other solution is x equal two. Let's check that. Well, let's see. Log base two of four is equal to two because this base two squared is equal to four. So log base two of four is equal to two. Log base two of two is equal to one. Same reason, because the base two raised to this power one is equal to that two. And yes, two plus one is equal to three. Therefore, x equals two is a solution and it's the only solution. I only box this one up. Next equation, solve for t out of this equation. Some of you may recognize this as the compound interest formula where the principal is 100. Compounding is done 12 times a year, so that's monthly. The interest rate is 0 0.04, meaning 4% a year. And t is number of years. And the final balance is $200. So this can come up as a word problem where they say something like, Carolina deposits $100 in an account that pays 4% a year compounded monthly. How many years will it be until her balance is $200? Then you apply all the numbers given into the compound interest formula and you get the equation. Let's rewrite this equation here and strategize first. Our unknown variable is up there in the exponent. So to bring it out of the exponent, we need to undo the exponential, meaning we need to take the logarithm. We want to take the logarithm of this part right here of the exponential. That means we need to get rid of this 100 first. Get rid of the 100, we get the exponential by itself. Then we can take logarithm both sides. Then the t will no longer be in the exponent. It will be taken out of the exponent. And that will be good. Let's do that. First step is to get rid of the 100. 100 is being multiplied. So I'm going to divide both sides by 100. 
it cancels. So I have one plus 0.04 divided by 12 to the 12 T. On the right, 200 divided by 100 is two. And now I take logarithm both sides. Um, log base what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what log. So you could do log base 10. I'm gonna do LN because we just learned about LN. I want to use it. So I'm gonna take LN both sides. Now on the right, I have LN of two and LN of two is just a number. So it doesn't bother me. On the left, I have LN of all this complicated thing, but I'm single-mindedly focused on the T and it's up in the exponent. So I want to bring it to the front using the exponent property. So I have 12 T LN of one plus 0.04 divided by 12 is equal to LN of two. I want to isolate T. On the left is multiplied by 12. On the right is multiplied by LN of something complicated. But again, I look at this and I say, oh, it's just the number. 0.04 is a number divided by 12. I get a number, a decimal. I add one to it, I get another decimal. And I take LN of it, I get another crazy decimal. But the whole thing is just one big decimal. I can just divide it off. I can divide by 12 both sides to get rid of the 12. And I can divide by this big LN both sides to get rid of it. So there's my answer. T is equal to LN of two divided by 12 times LN of All right, a final challenge for you is to use your calculator and compute this expression into a decimal number. You should get 17.3575, et cetera. If you don't get close to 17.3 something, check your order of operations. Here's a summary of the things we talked about in this video. Hope that's been helpful. Press subscribe for more contents. And thanks for watching. Bye.